Hey guys, Allie Marie here with My Catholic Perspective. Back in fourth grade, I had a teacher who would never give us any homework, and I was the student who begged her to give us more, and all the other kids would groan. True to form, I'm here to do that again today. The laity may groan at what I have to say here, but I think it is imperative. Priests, you keep on giving us penances that are say our Father, say a Hail Mary, say a Glory Be, and you're good. This is such a disservice to all of the laity, and today I want to talk about why. When I go to confession, when I confess my deepest, darkest secrets, and I confess how many times I've done them and everything else, and the priest tells me, go to the pew and just, just pray a Hail Mary, go pray three Hail Marys, I sit there, I'm like, I already pray those on my own. I, I pray the, the rosary every day. I don't need that as a penance, okay? Listen to what I'm saying and get creative. Listen to what your confessor is saying and get creative. If they are confessing that they are watching pornography, tell them that their penance is that they can't use any electronics after 10 p.m. for seven days. If they confess that they're complaining about their spouse all the time, tell them that they have to tell their spouse one positive thing every single day for the next seven days. I'm not saying go back to the seventh century and start implementing public penances. I'm not saying go back, you know, St. Clement of Alexandria, committing somebody to six months of penance, anything like that. I'm saying listen to the confession and give a penance accordingly. As you know, absolution of sin does not occur until the penance is complete. So I understand the desire to offer your parishioners that ability to have immediate absolution. However, as I said, this is a major disservice. In the catechism, as you know, in paragraph 1460, it says the penance the confessor imposes must take into account the penitent's personal situation and must seek his spiritual good. It must correspond as far as possible with the gravity and nature of the sins committed. It can consist of prayer, which is what we typically hear about, or it can be an offering, works of mercy, service of neighbor, voluntary self-denial, sacrifices, and above all, the patient acceptance of the cross we must, we must bear. And they allow us to become co-heirs with the risen Christ. We're, through our penance, we should feel like it proves the contrite heart. It proves the contrition, that the act of contrition that we make in that booth, it proves that it is heartfelt and real and that we aren't just there to say, yeah, I've done this. Yeah, I've done that. Okay, I'll go pray. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Full of grace. Lord is with the blessed of the Holy Spirit. Blessed of the fruit of the Holy Mary, Mother of God. Praise for the sinners. Now we're going to death. Okay, penance is done. Okay, let's go. This is what my husband does, right? So whenever I'm given that penance, I go out to the pew and I'm like meditate on those words so heavily. I try to really take them to heart. Then my husband goes in, does confession. He comes out. I, I've gotten permission from him to share this. But he comes out. He sits in the pew. He's done in a heartbeat. And I just look at him and I say, did you even think about the words? Like, how are you done already? He's like, yeah, I pray these prayers all the time. That's what you're doing. You're not giving your parishioners the opportunity to become co-heirs in Christ, which is what the penance should do. Where I'm from here in Michigan, you know, we call it the Sacrament of Reconciliation or Confession. But worldwide, in other places, it's actually known as the Sacrament of Penance. The penitential act that you offer to your parishioner is actually the, the piece that carries the sacramental grace. So by telling them to just pray in our Father, pray a Hail Mary, pray a Glory Be, you're not serving them. You're not allowing them that opportunity to become a co-heir with Christ. You're not allowing them that opportunity to prove that their heart is contrite, to prove that they want to change. You're not giving them that opportunity to say, here I am, a priest, endowed by the Holy Spirit, ordained by the hand of Peter, and I am here to be your spiritual guide. I'm hearing you say that you're struggling with lying. Okay, I want you to keep, you know, your penance is to keep track of every lie. You have to write down every single lie. You're struggling with talking negatively. You need to get a gratitude journal. You have to write in your gratitude journal every single day for a week or for a month, whatever it might be. And then that allows the parishioner the opportunity, the necessity, it necessitates them to attempt to turn away from that sin and to avoid the near occasion of sin, as they say, in the act of contrition. 
So today I just wanted to share that. It's been heavy on my heart. If you are a priest um, who does take the confessions that your penitent is giving you into consideration as you're giving their penance, thank you. Keep it up. Even if they're groaning, even if they're not happy about it, it is what they need. I'm a self-taught pianist. I hated taking lessons. I wanted to just teach myself. I took lessons for one year. Um, if you've ever heard of the Gilmore Keyboard Festival here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, I took lessons under somebody who coordinates all of that. So I'm, I'm classically trained. And I learned more in that one year with that teacher than I did in the 15, 18 years that I've taught myself because somebody else was giving the material to me to study. I couldn't just flip through a book and say, oh, this, this song looks nice to, to learn or, oh, I'm familiar with this song. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. No, somebody else was imposing it upon me and then was holding me accountable to that. If somebody doesn't fulfill their penance, they're supposed to confess it in the next confession they come to. And so it is imperative that you, as priests, as our spiritual guides, to be pushing us forward, to be encouraging us, to, to think outside of the box, to go outside of the box, and to ultimately seek Christ in a place that we wouldn't have known to seek them. Just as my piano teacher made me learn songs of severe complexity that I had never even heard of before that truly developed me as a pianist. So... Those are my thoughts for today. If you have a priest that you know, you know, if you have other priest friends or anything, please share this video with them. I'm just hopeful that it reaches whoever needs to hear it today. And if you are the laity and you are groaning at my video, I'm so sorry, but we need the homework. We need somebody else to be pushing us. We need somebody else to be encouraging us forward in this path toward heaven. And it, I mean, it begins in that confessional booth. If there's anything that's going to get our time off purgatory, if there's anything that's going to assist in our holiness and development of virtue, it's going to that confessional. That's all for today. I pray that God grants you the resources that you need to draw closer to him and in turn to those around you. And I do pray that you're able to make it a great day. We'll see you next time.